What is going on everybody? I'm Noah. Welcome back to another episode of Shop Talk here on the Madison Angling Channel. I'm here at DNS up on the north end of Madison here today and I'm actually on my way up to the Wisconsin River. We're going to do a quick video about fishing plastics. Uh, I've got a lot of questions about using plastics recently and in fact a couple days ago on my last guide trip plastics absolutely smashed. But we had to do some kind of goofy stuff to make it work. So I want to give you guys a quick run through of some of these plastics and then we're going to head up to the river and actually use some of these. So I like to keep things pretty simple as far as the varieties of plastics go uh, in the sense of size and style. So I'm going, to, I'm going to narrow it down to basically three different main styles of soft plastics. One being Kind of like your gulp minnow fluke style, sort of like a pintail minnow style plastic. Your uh, your paddle tail, and there's so many of them here, I didn't know which one to grab. This is a really good one. We caught a lot of fish on these the other day. So your paddle tails and the OG ribbon tail, whether that's a grub, uh, a moxie, a ringworm, just you know, kind of your typical curly tail grub here. Now another thing to consider when you're looking at plastics is the overall size of the plastic. So I'm going to open this because I'm going to buy these because I need more of them. But um, not all of these are built the same and we'll take a look at that when we go up on the river here. But uh, for an example, these walleye assassin plastics, I am not sponsored by them but I just really like them. If you take a look here, you can see that the, the body is actually pretty wide. The tail necks down pretty small and you got a nice big paddle tail on there. Now we're going to take a look at that and compare it to another bait here. Let's see, I really like these. I'm going to buy this so I'm going to go ahead and open it. So this is the Pulse R by B Fish and Tackle. So I'm gonna put these next to each other here. They have a very similar paddle tail, but you'll notice that the, uh, the B Fish and has all these little ribs on it. It's actually a little bit less rubber, but in theory, there, there could actually be even more surface area. So these two baits, even though they're very similar in size and profile, they actually run very, very different. They create a different amount of drag in the water. They displace a different amount of water, which gives them a different action and different attracting qualities to walleyes. Now, expanding on that a little bit, let's talk about the curly tail grubs, right? We got the OG Kalen's curly tail lunker grub. Um, they're great for trailers, but they're great on a jig head too. Now, comparing that to something like a ringworm, let's see if we can find two colors that are similar to each other here. We'll do sartreuse and sartreuse. So your ringworms are going to have kind of these, these little ribs, very similar to, uh, to this guy here. We got these little ribs on here, which is gonna give it a little bit different action. Now on your traditional curly tail grubs, you're gonna have a little bit more tail action than you are on a ringworm style uh, plastic. So it's good to have a variety of these in the boat, whether it's you know bigger, smaller, uh, on certain days, it does seem like the bigger tail gets more bites. There's certain days where it seems like the smaller tails get more bites. So for me personally, I like to bulk up when the water gets dirty. And the reason being you're displacing more water, it makes it easier for the fish to hone in on it, right? We're fishing for predators and they all have lateral lines down the side of their body that are designed to pick up minute vibrations in the water. So when you have something that displaces more water, it's gonna be a lot easier to find in dirty water. So in clear water situations, I'm gonna go with something a little smaller, dirty water, I'm gonna go with something a little bigger, which is pretty straightforward. Now, another thing to look at is, uh, is colors, right? A lot of people get bent out of shape about color. What color do I need? Honestly, I'm looking more for action and profile and size than I am color. Color comes last, and that's just my personal preference, but if you guys are headed to the Wisconsin River, you cannot go wrong with anything green, anything orange, and anything with purple in it. Especially this dude, this purple and sartreuse. Why not combine the two best colors, right? It makes perfect sense. So there's so many different things you can think about when it goes into color. Just pick something you like. But if you're like me and you have a problem and you're kind of addicted to fun colors, load up. And guys, Pat has a bunch of this stuff. This is all the stuff that I use up on the river. So if you guys are going up to the Wisconsin River and you're coming from the Madison area or you're swinging by, stop into DNS, get loaded up on some plastics. Uh, Gulp minnows, we might as well talk about these here. Uh, they work great, guys. There's no reason to not use these. Obviously, they're a lot more durable than live bait, and they come in lots of fun colors. In fact, I've never seen these ones before. Like, a, it's purple and silver. Everybody knows purple's a great walleye color, right? So why not? Does scent make a difference? 
it could. I don't really know that for sure, but if you're into the scent thing, Powerbait's got you covered as far as scents are concerned, or you could use some old salt bait spray. That stuff works really well too. So obviously lots of different options here, but we're gonna grab a handful of baits here. We're gonna run up to the river. We're gonna give you guys a little rundown on how I like to rig these up, the jigs I like to use based on the current, and how we're fishing them, whether we're pitching them, vertical jigging, or slowly working them up the current. I'm gonna show you guys how I like to rig these up given the conditions we have up on the river today. So let's get checked out. Let's head up to the river. Are you even from Wisconsin if you don't stop at Quick Trip? on your way to go fishing i don't think so but all right guys we are in the boat we're on the river and we're going to talk plastics here so obviously we stopped in at dns grabbed a couple goodies now i want to show you guys kind of how i like to use these different types of plastics because not all of them run the same uh, as i'm talking here i've got some b-roll i'm going to show you guys comparing these different styles of baits more specifically smooth pieces of plastic versus ribbed pieces of plastic. So let's go ahead and just start with the paddle tails here, guys. So not all paddle tails run the same. And you'll notice here, we've got the Be Fishing brand paddle tail, the Pulse R, and we've got these uh, Walleye Assassin paddle tails here too. Now the most obvious thing, now they're about the same size, they're about the same width, but the most obvious difference here is the fact that the, the Be Fishing plastic has these little ribs on it. This one doesn't, and essentially what that does is it creates more surface area in the water. That's going to create more drag. Is that a good thing? In some cases, yes. That's going to help slow down the fall of this piece of plastic. So this is better suited for slower moving water or vertical jigging presentations. The, uh, the downside to this is if you're fishing in faster current like we have today, this is going to have a lot more drag on it than something that is smooth with less surface area. So this one, this nice smooth surface is gonna get you down quicker and keep you down longer, more in the strike zone than something like this on a high current day. Now, obviously the weight of your jig head does have an impact on that, but I'm gonna give you guys the side-by-side -side here. And you notice I'm using the same size jig head. It's a half ounce jig head on each of these. And you'll notice that the, the uh, sorry, not the Moxie, the, uh, the Pulsar, is dragging back behind the uh, the walleye assassin here and that's because there is more resistance on it there's more surface area so that's something to consider guys now that can work to your advantage like i said before if you're looking to basically hang this in the strike zone as long as possible sometimes one of these swim baits with a little more uh, surface area is going to let you do that in conjunction with the right weight of jig head now in today's conditions we've got about 13,000 cubic feet per second coming out of the dam here up at the Wisconsin Dells. Uh, that's a lot of water, so we need to use these smooth ones to get down. But that's what's kind of nice about having a small variety of plastics. And when people ask me, what, what do I need for plastics up here? I always tell them, get something smooth, get something ribbed. These are gonna work better on slow current days. These are gonna work a little better on fast current days. All right, so moving on here, uh, we, we touched base on our, our paddle tail style plastics. Let's talk about worms. I got worms. Uh, if I ever own a bait shop, I'm totally gonna name it, I got worms. Uh, grubs, right? So we got our, our kind of our OG ringworm or ribworm, depending on where you're from, kind of a walleye staple and the good old grub. We got a just a, just a curly tail grub, three inch curly tail grub. Um, when and where do I like to use these compared to a more of a swim bait style or paddle tail piece of plastic? For me, I like to use these in high current situations or uh, really finesse presentations where I'm gonna put a very light jig head on here with a pretty bulky body, uh, these Be Fishing. I am not sponsored by Be Fishing, but if you guys are watching, hook me up. I use a lot of your stuff. Um, these, uh, these bee fishing grubs are big, heavy grubs. The Kalins ones are too, so I guess there goes that sponsorship potential, but uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I like these big, hefty grubs because they fall nice and slow, especially on a smaller jig. Now I have this one rigged on a heavier jig because we're doing the comparison here in the current to show you guys the difference in the drag. Um, the ringworms I like to use in really high current situations though because it's such a slim profile. This thing cuts through the current really, really well. You can also shorten these up a little bit. In fact, I uh, was fishing one of these earlier in quite a bit of current. I have almost a three quarter ounce jig on a uh, ringworm that I shortened up probably about a half or three quarters of an inch or so. 
and this rig will get down really, really well in faster current. Do you have to use these in fast moving water? Absolutely not. You can vertical jig these, you can fish these in slow water. Really, it comes down to the weight of the jig head. So in today's situation, most of the fish we're encountering are in that 15 to 18 feet of water, and they're pretty much in direct current or they're laying down in little troughs in the bottom just out of the current. So for us to get baits in front of those fish, our best options are either vertical jigging and hoping for a reaction strike or anchoring the boat in the current and walking these jigs slowly up the river. So based on the flow today, uh, the, the better options for us have been the swim bait, the smooth body swim bait, something that's gonna have less surface area that's gonna get down, and the ringworm with a heavy jig, getting this thing down nice and easy with less surface area. Now, that being said, yes, it does have ridges on it. It does have ribs on it, but this thing is super, super bulky. So really they can almost sort of cancel each other out, but we're gonna do a side-by-side -side here in the water. Um, depending on the current and the jig head, you know, it, it can vary a little bit, but you can see here in this video, this is kind of how these two are running next to each other. Same size jig head um, in the same current right next to each other here. Um, but really, guys, it comes down to personal preference. So for me, especially in this particular situation where we're fishing in direct current and we're not fishing vertical, I got stuff blowing around in the boat here. Um, I want to find a, a jig and plastic combo that is going to keep my jig within about 15 inches of the bottom and just kind of hang it there as long as possible. So you may have to experiment around a little bit, which now brings us to our jig head, which I do think can make a difference at times. Now when I'm fishing in current, I prefer to have some type of a current cutter style jig head. So I have a VMC Moon Eye jig here and I've got an Eagle Claw. Um, I think this is the Pro V Bend walleye jig here, if I remember right. They have a bunch of different jigs. There's so many things to remember here. Uh, but I like both of these and the, and the key feature to these and why I like these so much for current is if you look at them head on here, they're pretty narrow. The sides are flat and that does help cut the current at least a little bit. Now there are other versions of this. There's more of a teardrop style that's a little more skinny. They do cut through the current really well too. Which brand of jig is the best? It's up to you. Um, I, I personally kind of like these Eagle Claws because they have a pretty light wire hook. These bend pretty easily. So if you're fishing wood, which we have a lot of here in the Wisconsin River, you'll get your jig back because you can straighten that thing out. Now, if I'm dealing with rock, I'll go with a little heavier wire hook. Um, the VMCs seem to have a little bit heavier wire hook. You can interchange them if you want, but if you're fishing wood, I like the lighter wire hooks. As far as weight goes, I like to have a variety. Typically, I'm not coming up here with anything smaller than a quarter ounce, and I will bring all the way up to a one ounce jig along with me. And I know one ounce of lead is crazy, but if you pair that with a big piece of plastic that has lots of ribs on it, a lot of surface area, depending on how deep of water you're fishing, if you're fishing in 20, 25 feet of water, even deeper sometimes, that might be the perfect combination of resistance and weight to keep that thing just off the bottom. How do you know that it's in the right spot? It, it, it's all about feel. It just takes time and experience to figure that out, but it just gives you an excuse to come out here and do this, right? Go fishing. When you have time to go, go, and don't be afraid to try new stuff like this. So guys, I know this was a quick and dirty rundown on these rigs and plastics, uh, but if you're coming up to the Dells here, uh, the bite's been pretty consistent. Uh, we're, we're starting to get to that point where fish are really going to start to get very active. If we get some more rain, even more fish are going to push up. But if you're coming up here, I don't know if you noticed a common theme with uh, with some of the colors here, but uh, green, orange, purple, sartreuse, kind of your typical walleye colors. This one's pretty cool too, this pink and gold. Um, those are what I typically fish up here. Jig color I don't think really matters. It's more so getting the right amount of resistance on a given day with the right jig head to keep your presentation within about 15 inches of the bottom. And once you find a sweet spot, don't deviate from it. So that's what I got for you guys. If you guys are looking for plastics, please stop into DNS. Pat has an awesome selection. If there's anything he doesn't have that you want, he can probably order it for you. And uh, also want to give a shout out to uh, everybody who has been a part of the Shop Talk series, all of the comments and suggestions. I really appreciate it, guys. So I want to say thank you. Also going to say thanks to my buddy, Jim, for holding the camera here. Thanks, Jim. You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> so with that, guys, we're going to spend a little bit more time fishing here. We're going to experiment with a bite that we've never tried up here uh, right around dark. And I'm kind of excited to see what happens. So that could be a video someday, maybe. Because if it's really good, I'm not sharing it right now because I don't think anyone else is doing it. But 
Uh, that being said, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Keep the suggestions coming. We'll see you guys on the next video. Is it going? It is going. Is the thing happening? Okay. It's happening. Oh my god, it's happening. <laughs> <Something's> <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> All right, so we're on.